Ephesians 6, 8 through 10. Let's get to it. A final word. Read it with me. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Talk to me. Put on what? All of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. I want you to write this down. The devil has a strategy for your life. I know, Pastor Joshua, you, we don't talk about the enemy. No, no, today we're not going to talk about the enemy. Today we're going to talk about the weapons that God has literally given you to fight against the enemy. But you got to know that there is somebody coming for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? We talk about the gifts of the Spirit. We talk about all the beautiful parts of the Spirit, the gifts and the benefits. But just so that you know, you're not just spiritual to be spiritual. You're spiritual to attack some stuff that wants to attack you. Like sickness is like, that, that, that's a spiritual something that shouldn't be there. Like poverty is something that comes literally from the depths of hell. And you should not just be happy being, speak, being able to speak in tongues and be a prophet. You should be able to prophesy to poverty. You should be able to prophesy to sickness. You should be able to use your spiritual gifts to overturn the stuff in the world that you don't like. Now, if you watch the news, I don't watch the news. I don't even watch television. Anybody else on that crew? I watch Netflix, maybe YouTube sometimes. But if you watch enough, enough television, how many of you have ever heard or felt your heart leap? You see somebody hungry, your heart leaps. You see somebody that doesn't have a home, your heart leaps. You see women being mistreated, your heart leaps. You see black and brown communities uh, being disparaged, your heart leaps. You see people in confusion. The reason why your heart begins to hurt when you see stuff bad in the world isn't because it's just there to break your heart. The spirit on the inside of you is looking to be activated to take care of that issue. We're going to talk about that today. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against what? Flesh and blood enemies, but what? Against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Write the second point down. What you are fighting in your life, you cannot see with your eyes. Okay? Getting diesel in the gym is not going to help you in the spirit. Eating a, a healthy, like, you know, macros and all that is not going to help you in the spirit. So we think that if our physical body is good, your physical body is no good in the spirit. Does that make sense? Put on the full armor of God, oh, I'm sorry, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against, somebody say, evil spirits in the heavenly places. Let me break this down. There are no evil spirits in heaven. When you look at the Greek, heavenly spaces is the space between heaven and earth. It's the space that the, de that the devil, Satan, was given when Adam and Eve fell. It's that place that used to be holy. Remember how we talked in the first sermon, how the Holy Spirit hovered over the earth. The reason why you need to have the Holy Spirit is so that we can change the atmosphere. I just need three people right there to raise your hand and say, I'm about to change the atmosphere. Like, if you, you, you don't have to use politicians. You don't have to use an entertainment. I don't have to have 10 million views or, or followers on the gram. God, you can use me. Somebody say, you can use me to change the atmosphere. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor. So you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Let's read these really quick. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Then what do we got there? We got uh, uh, the armor of righteousness. We got some shoes. I think they're Jordans, but that's just me. They have peace with them. Uh, the good news so that you can be fully prepared. In addition, all of these. Hold up. There's a shield of faith, which is super dope because it stops the fiery el uh, the arrows of the devil. Like you look really silly trying to fight spiritual issues with physical strategy. But, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Put on the salvation as your helmet I think that it's a fitted cap and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God but this is the thing you can't use the word of God if it's not in your mouth people be trying to take their Bible Marvin like I slay thee and God's like it only works if it comes out of you underline verse 18 because this is where we're going to pitch a tent somebody say pitch a tent then we're going to build a house verse 18 read it with me it says pray in the spirit at sometimes Every, every time you need something, when you face Goliath, when you don't know what you're doing, when you're at your wits end, no, somebody scream it. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Write this down. This is the sermon title that I have. Preach it to your neighbor as, as we read it together. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, whatever you say. I come to encourage you to know that your mouth is actually the strongest weapon that you have. Not your worship, not your praise, not your thanksgiving. But when you open up your mouth, the word of God multiple times says, Joshua, whatever you say, that's what's going to happen. But the problem is, is that some of us are afraid of our own voices. 
The basic, the basic level of all humanity is, somebody say, communication. So, so let me run you through a few R really quick. Um, can you throw up my, my first one? Uh, what do you call this? You call that can? What's in it? Pop. Uh, where we're from, we say soda. So if I ask you for a soda where I'm from, you say what kind? I'll even go even more country. Hey, pass me a Coke. Where we from, you ask, what kind of Coke do you want? I want an orange Fanta. But in your brain, you'd be like, but Fanta, no, 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 no. Because you don't know how we speak, you can misinterpret what I am asking for. Next, what is this? Shopping cart, where we from, we call this a buggy. Oh, for all, all the white folks, buggy. Buggy? There's some black folks in here too from Omaha. Buggy, dog, what's buggy? This is a buggy. Go to the next one. What do you do with said buggy? You say grocery shopping? Okay, where we from, we say we're going to make groceries. And it's not groceries, it's groceries. Everybody's welcome to Ebonics 101. Everybody's going to be black for just two seconds. Everybody said groceries. No, you didn't say it right. Say it from your soul. Like everybody's black in the room. We all came from Africa. You know what I'm talking about? Just like that little 1% that you got when you did DNA.com. Come on, somebody say groceries. There you go. We're all going to go to Mississippi next week. Next one. What is this? That's a plate of food, right? So when somebody's going to serve you, what do you say? Make me a plate. Well, where we're from, we say, fix me a plate. I can't tell you how many Thanksgiving or, or like we had grills and I brought my friends that were not dark. Okay, it is what it is. And they come like, fix, it's not broken, Josh. Like the plate's not. Oh, fix a plate. That means you go and ask them what they want. But if you got to ask auntie what she wants, you shouldn't be fixing her plate. How many of y'all know, if you got to ask me what I want, you know I like the, like, how many of you guys like the hot dog that's like burnt a little bit? Like when you bite on it, there's some resistance. Then you bite on it and it, you hear it, you hear it tear. Yeah, if you bring me one that's not burnt, you're not fixing my plate no more. Somebody said amen. amen. Next. What's that? Now what do you say when you want to turn on light in your room? What do you say? Where we from? We don't say turn on the light. We say cut it on. Pastor Joshua, that doesn't make any sense. If you're cutting the light, then wouldn't that turn it off? No. Because if you live long enough in our house, you're going to have to learn how to communicate at the level that we talk at. Want me to bring it a little bit deeper? Somebody say amen. How do you say in your house, I'll be there at 6 o'clock? If you're going to show up somewhere, what do you say? Huh? I'll be there at six. And my people, this is what we say. I'm going to show up. I'm going to be there. And all y'all dark people in the room, don't cap. That's what you say. So whenever you hear your girlfriend, your homie of darker persuasion say, who all going to be there? They're not coming. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> hey, Pastor Josh, X, Y, and Z, who, who going to be there? And I'm just looking for one person. I might not even know him. Well, Jonathan, mm, yeah, I, I, I'm going to see if I can make it over there, if it's the Lord's will. Okay, all right. Told you all y'all are black. I'm just, letting, I'm, just, I'm just letting you know. Just letting you know. What about this one? How do you ask how somebody is? How are you? Where we from, we have two words. And when I say this, all my country folk that are born in the, like in the South, like you from the country, even the country, like raise your hand. You ready? This is it right here. You good? <laughs> now, depending on where you're from, you good has totally different definitions. You about to fight somebody, like you about to check somebody, you say it like this. You good? That's what parents ask their children. And they'll even like add another word. You, you straight? When you want to check somebody because you're about to throw hands, oh, you good. That's when buddy about to go pop the trunk. If you ever hear somebody say you good and smile like this and go to their car, run. He's not going to get you a random act of kindness car from AWC. He's not about to invite you to the big baptism. He about to go get that thing and let that thing go. Rah! I'd like to get out of there. Somebody get out of there. 
if we do not agree on a language, we will misinterpret everything. Because what something means to somebody over here means something different to somebody over here. This is the reason why all of us have to learn how to speak in the spirit. Don't get weird, because the difference between soda and pop is the same as speaking in tongues and praying in English. After today, what I'm hoping is that we will make this so practical that you'll have to really fight the question, like, why don't I speak in the spirit? Here we go, point number one. God can't support what we won't share. What we are all fighting is not flesh and blood. Remember, the word said that. The biggest enemy that you will ever fight is who you look at in the mirror every day. In some of our lives, we're a worse enemy to ourselves than the devil is. The devil can use you as a weapon against you. It's called anxiety. It's called depression. It's, it's called uh, uh, not, not being able to, a uh, social anxiety, like when you're around people. Since the enemy is not omnipotent, you know what that means? He cannot, I mean, uh, um, he's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere all the time. What he will do is how you feel if you're 20 pounds overweight, he'll allow you to tear you down. If you are not happy with your family, your wife, and your kids, the enemy doesn't have to visit all of them. He just has to use you to tear them down. So... What we have to realize is that in our lives, God cannot support what you don't share. This is the reason why prayer is important. I don't know how many times my parents told me as I was sitting as a kid, read out loud. Why? Because there's something that happens in your brain when you hear the words come out of your mouth. The biggest obstacle of your personal spiritual maturity is you. Your thoughts, your past, your feel of the future, and also your own perception of God. How many of you know in your life that there are some things you think about God that are not true? You know they're not true, but we will cling on to them to justify not trusting him. There is only one thing that breaks through the barrier of you and gets your heart conditioned to him, and that's prayer. Today I'd like to talk to you about why prayer is not just something that you add on, just like the Holy Spirit. Prayer is essential. Somebody say prayer is essential. Here's another shameless plug. We have a prayer team that meets every Sunday morning concerning the church, concerning families. Like if you ever feel some release in your life throughout the week, it's not always that Pastor Josh was praying for me. No, 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 no. That room between the hours of 9 and 10 o'clock, like on Sunday mornings, is anointed. It's some people, it shouldn't just be the older people in the church. I believe that there are some younger people under the age of 15, under the age of 20, under the age of 30, that have the ability not just to pray, but to intercede. I don't know how many of you in your life, you know some stuff that you walked out of, it wasn't because you were good. But somebody went and sweated out they perm. Somebody was on their knees. Somebody got rug burns because they were praying for me. Somebody said, pray for me. Pray. Prayer is essential. It's not extra. You should be praying like the word said. Somebody say, all the time. The believer dies when they get uncomfortable hearing themselves speak. Can't tell you how many times as a kid. Whenever we would be praying in a group, my daddy would thump me on the forehead or, or you know, pinch me right behind. Anybody got pinched right here before? I don't know why this hurt. Or pinch right here. Ooh-wee. That, that thing. Yeah, all the kids. Miss Alicia, stop, 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 stop doing that to them kids. All your kids are like, man. But they would say, whenever you hear somebody praying, you join in. I don't care if it's one person or a thousand. But you need to open up your mouth. Because at some point in time, if the enemy can get you to be embarrassed with the only weapon that you have to fight the enemy, he'll never have to attack you. Do you know how crazy your life would be if you would stop fighting with people and begin praying? Like, how many situations in your life, how many of you know there's some stuff in your life you do not have the power to change? Like, I don't have the power to change. I can't change the situation. But if you don't pray, that's just like saying that you're okay with the situation staying the way it is. So look at your neighbor and say, you need to pray. Your initial instinct should be to say something. And here's the thing. Self-talk is in your DNA. Yeah. So those moments when you thought that granny was schizophrenic, no, no, no. She was acting as she should. 
Those moments when you're in service and you're sending it to somebody and you're like, what are they saying? And they're talking to themselves. How many of you guys practice self-talk? Come on, Joshua. You got this, bro. It's going to be easy. It's okay. I know you don't want to forgive this person, but it's okay. If you forgive them, then you can sleep. Like, like, forgive this person. Like, you got this, bro. You got this. I do that in the grocery line and people be like, this man is weird. No, your boy is healthy. How many situations in your life would you have been able to walk into the situation healthier if you were to talk to yourself before you walked in the room? Me and Vanessa don't agree all the time. So I got to talk to your boy. I know you don't agree with her. Yeah, I don't. I know. I know you don't. Bro, it's the Latin in her. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. But don't do that. Like you talk to yourself and it's not schizophrenia. It's spiritual. Let me prove to you that self-talk. Somebody say prove it. Genesis 1, verse 2, God, somebody say, God said, let there be, let there be light. Verse 6, God said, let there be sky. Verse 9, God said, let there be water and land. Verse 11, God said, let there be vegetation. Verse 16, what? Let there be space. Verse 20, God says what? Let there be animals. From verse 2 to verse 20, God talks to what he wants to create. He talks to the sky, creates space. He talks to the ground, creates animals. He talks to the ground, he creates vegetation. But then there's something that happens. In verse, uh, verse 26, it said, then God said. Now, if you skip over this, you'll miss something that changed. Before, it's God said this. God said that. God said this. God said that. Then God said when you look at the word then in the Greek, it means that God turned to himself. <laughs> then is a predicate. If I'm talking to you and I say, boom, 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 and then I say, now, I'm talking to somebody else. How many of you have that conversation with your kids before you go into the grocery store? You're talking to all your kids. Hey, I want y'all to blah, 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 blah. When you walk in here, I don't want you to touch nothing. Don't look at nothing. But when you say now, if you got three kids, you're only talking to one now. Like you give us, you give because <laughs> it was me you gave instructions to all your kids but then mama will say now <laughs> now for you I want your hand in my pocket anybody walk with their hand in their mama's pocket growing up I don't want you looking at nothing I don't want you to matter of fact close your eyes actually get in the buggy I'm too big get in the buggy because now what God is doing is he's changing his communication he doesn't have to talk to himself when he creates dogs and cats. He doesn't have to talk to himself when he makes water. But when God wanted to create a spirit, he had to change the way he communicated. I hope you're getting this this morning. When God talked to you, and there was no like plan. There, there was no blueprint. Like, he made dogs and he made all these different breeds and all these different categories. But God had to say then a billion different times to make each and every one of us. I want to impress upon you today that when God created you, he didn't take any pieces from other people that he had left over. Every time that he created a human being, glory to God. Every time he creates a human being, he knows exactly what is necessary because he has to have conversation with himself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy. It says, then God said, which means that he turned inward and said, hey, let's us, let who? Us make mankind in whose image? In our image. There is a reason why you don't do everything that you think. If you did it, if you, if you did everything you think, we would all be in jail. Anybody real rage in here? Don't raise your hand. Sis was like, you wanted to run sis off the road. I hope you didn't. You wanted to, but you didn't. You wanted to, to, to slick tell your boss something under your breath, but you did. Well, I hope well, some of y'all are crazy enough you will. And then try to figure out why when you come back to your office on Monday, your cubicle is clean because you said something silly on Friday. Goofy. The reason why you can't say everything that you think is because everything that you think can happen. They missed it. The reason why you cannot say everything that you think is because just like God, he thought of the tree before he created it. But the minute he said it, the tree had to come to life. So in your life, you're speaking in the spirit even if you think you're speaking English. So when you say, girl, this is my headache, you have verbally said, I have a headache, I claim it, 
I own it, and now I am going to be responsible for this headache. When you say this little boy is going to grow up to be a heartbreaker, you have now verbally told a three-year-old that he's going to have to try to figure out how to maintain this because of words that were spoken over his life. Do you know how many things that you probably are walking through now, not because you're a bad person, but a word curse was spoken over you before you even knew how to speak English? So you're not fighting the devil. You're fighting words. Somebody's getting free today. You're, you're fighting words. Four years old, somebody called you fat, wide load, big as a truck. And now you're trying to figure out why you're suffering to lose weight. Yes, you need to get your macros right. Yes, you need to go and get a trainer. But sometimes the words will literally grip your body to tell you it won't work out. It's the worst thing that you can do when somebody says, my son is autistic. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. My son is healed of the Lord. And he's walking through this season of autism. Like, you begin to use your words differently because I don't want to connect what I'm walking through with who I am. Because when God created Joshua, he didn't make him dyslexic. I have a relationship with dyslexia that I'm walking through. So what that means is that when your babies go back to school in August, you should, before you ask for an IEP, before you ask for a counselor, you should lay hands on your child and say everything that this teacher's about to say to you You're not responsible. Holy Spirit, you said in Romans that everything that I would learn, you would call back to my remembrance. So do your job. Baby, just go to school and try your best. So now we have children that are trying to do things in school that they're not built to do. Your child cannot get A's. It's not your child's studying habits that gets them A's. The Holy Spirit brings what they studied at 7 o'clock two days ago into the, 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 the test in the moment. And now you're recollecting because the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, no, uh, number seven is B. Oh, y'all think I'm, the word of God said to pray in the spirit all the time. You don't think that Joshua in the seventh grade was speaking in tongues before he took a test? You make sure that you got a two, uh, number two pencil and eraser. But as I'm sitting there, what are you saying? Shut up. Because you, Joshua, you're interrupting the class. Can I step outside? Because I know I need to pass this test, and I know I'm not smart enough to pass it. But somebody say, Holy Spirit, help me. You're not fighting against flesh and blood. The biggest wars that you will fight are the things that you said. Something you said in a season of pain. That now is it's 15 years later. And your words will remind you. Remember what you said, Josh? So this is why we never say words like never. I mean, I'm never going to get this. You have now, just like God created trees, you've now created an obstacle. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Have you ever wondered why it is so, why there's so much trauma attached to confessing and being honest with yourself? You want to know how I know? How many of you won't say certain things because you know once you say it, it's real? You'll think it. You'll write it in your journal, but you won't say it. Why? Because even if you do not know the creator, You know that when you say certain things, now it's real. It's not because you're human. It's because you're spirit first. God has never said anything he didn't mean. That's why the church is so confused right now because we're trying to take certain red parts of the Bible out as if God didn't say it. Oh, oh, don't do that. No, no, no. We should love everybody, but God still said that sin is sin. Oh, we should love everybody, but God still said that marriage is between a man and a woman. Oh, you, we, we can love everybody. We can be like, this is great. But the word of God is very specific on certain things. And humanity is going in a basket because we've moved away from our morals. We've moved cornerstones in our lives where this should not move, regardless of how embarrassing it is, regardless of what people tell you, regardless of if you lose friends. Like, this is in our life because it keeps us safe the same thing in the word of God there was nothing in here that you should take out there's nothing in here that you should add everybody say it was God breathed breathed. we don't say it because once we do it it becomes real glory to God prayer aids you in two ways there's two points to prayer and the reason why prayer is so important is because all prayer is is talking to God that's all it is. It's, it's not scary. It's, it's, it's not weird. Matter of fact, uh, write this down. Speaking in tongues isn't scary. It's sacred. It's not scary. 
prayer is not, it should, like, it, it, it's so interesting, like, when you ask, especially younger people today, to pray, and they get traumatized. Like, like I'm, apt, I'm asking you to, like, take off all your clothes and run through the building, like, in just your underwear. Like, oh, my God, I can't do that. Some, like, no, no, no. If the enemy can get you to think that your native tongue is weird, you'll never speak it. Do you know that 75% of people that have a different language that's spoken in their house will learn how to speak that language quicker if they learn how to say it to themselves? The reason why your baby took Spanish for two years and don't remember none of it, I'm one of them, is because I never had to use it in real life. When you come to church, this is not real life, okay? So when you're praying in here, this is Spanish 101. When you're in the sanctuary, you're learning about speaking in tongues. But you're going to lose it if you don't use it out there. Is that practical enough for y'all? Okay. You cannot pull on resources that you never used and practiced with. Does that make sense? So you cannot ask for the deepest parts of the gifts of the Spirit when you really need them if that's the first time that the Holy Spirit has heard your voice. This is why speaking in tongues needs to be practiced. Okay. I'm making this practice. What do you mean, Pastor Joshua? For all of us, we didn't just get the gift and just get like this prolific 19th century speaking. No. For some of us, we had to fumble in the dark. Anybody practice their tongues just like you practice the whip and the nay nay? Your kids are practicing those TikTok dances, you know? Like, they don't just watch it once and get it. They're in the, they're, I mean, they, like they're, they're, they're practicing it. And they're not embarrassed to see themselves fail. A lot of people walk away from the things of the Spirit because the first time they tried it, they felt like they failed. You have got to become comfortable with what has been uncomfortable your entire life. But if you become uncomfortable with speaking with people, it doesn't matter how many times you're in class. Because the only time you're in class is where you have confidence. Let me rewind that. The only time where you have confidence to speak in the spirit, to be spiritual is in the church. You're not spiritual. Because we're all spiritual. Like, there are a couple of people in the room that are trying to figure it out, like, what is going on? But if you're in the room, we all know what we're doing. So your, your spiritual gift is actually better in those moments where you feel uncomfortable when your family's arguing. Well, Pastor Josh, I don't know how they'll feel. That's exactly when you should use it. When you're sitting in the, uh, the operating room and the doctor says something weird, the question is this, exactly, because now the question is, do you now love science or are you going to trust the spirit? Well, it's cancer. I don't care about the doctor. I mean, I love you, like, just because there's a God, there's a God in you to do medicine, but insulin can't beat what I got behind my teeth. Somebody say amen. amen. There are different types of prayers, but there's, 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 there's two ways that prayer helps. There's the act of praying, which is when you physically talk. And then there's a, something that happens when you pray, when you hear yourself talk. The word of God says in Jude that when you pray, you edify yourself. The best prayer that you could ever receive is prayer that comes from you. Let me explain it to you. There are different types of prayers. The first prayer that we have is authoritative prayer. You throw it up really quick. There's, a, there's prayers of authority. The purpose of prayers of authority is to loosen mind. Matthew 18, 18 says what? I tell you truthfully, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Long story short, in prayer, you can exercise your authority by in prayer saying, I don't like what's happening in my house. And you can say it just like that. I don't know why people think you got to go to like prayer 101 to learn how to pray. Learning how to pray is just getting the stuff that's in your stomach out of your mouth. That's all that it is. Doesn't matter how janky it sounds. Doesn't matter if you say soda or pop. Like God is not worried about ebonics. He's not worried about synonyms. God just wants to know, do you trust me enough to tell me what you feel? Prayers of authority help you loosen bind, but then the result of using your authority is that it actually gives you control in your life. People in your life that look like they have a bunch of control are not better than you. They know how to loosen bind stuff in their life. What does loosen bind look like? When I walk into my house and I'm feeling anxious, that you will hear me if you hear me. 
In my house, I don't care if Vanessa's family's over. I don't care if my friends are over. I'll walk in my house and say, like, oh, whoa, 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 that spirit of anxiety, you got to go. I don't know how you walked in here, but we do not. Have, you, I loose it in heaven, and I bind it on earth. Like, you got to go somewhere else. How many things in your life would change if the minute you, feel, if you felt it, you said it? Your child is talking back to you. Whoa, we don't do that. You haven't done that in forever. I bind that in Jesus' name. I don't know what that is on the inside of you, but this arrogant spirit, this prideful spirit, sometimes you can look in the mirror to yourself. Hey, Joshua, you prideful, bro. What you, what you said in that staff meeting yesterday, you don't talk to people like that. What was that? I bind that in Jesus' name. And now what you've done is you've given heaven authority in your life to give you control. Somebody say control. control. There's another type of prayer. There's another type of prayer. It's a prayer of unity. Prayer of unity, the purpose of unity prayers is agreement. So every time that you hear us pray for the governor's office, every time you hear us pray for like the nonprofits in Omaha, we say, hey, God, may there be a spirit of unity. What we're asking isn't for them to like collaborate on a summer event. We're asking that their spirits would agree so that way when one of them does something great, the other nonprofit doesn't have to strip it down to feel better. Like, do you know, do you know how demonstratively destructive, that's a big word for you, it would be for us to open up a pantry? You know how many other ministries, if less people would go to their pantry and come to ours? So what does AWC do? We give food to the pantries that are already being fed. Well, AWC, why don't you open up a pantry? Because we're not in competition with other ministries. There are 47 pantries in Omaha. We don't need another one. Some might say agree. Rather than having your own party, why don't you have one with other people? Unity prayers help with, your, with agreement, and the result of unity is acceleration in your life. Let me prove it to you. First Corinthians, it says, I appeal to you that all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you perfectly united in mind and thought. One of the reasons why your life might be going at the speed that it is going is because you and your wife don't agree. Well, we've never said we don't agree, but your spirits have. Oh, okay. Your spirit is talking even when you don't say it. We call it vibes and energy. No, it's the spirit. It's the reason why your baby can play with little Sally from down the street. Little Sally come to your house and you say, we ain't playing with little Sally no more. But mom, you haven't even met her. She's just different. Yeah, she's very different and she's not welcome in mommy's house. But mom, we have to be accepting because the world says if we don't accept people, we're a bigot. Well, your mom going to be a bigot today because she is not welcome in my house. My life was changed because my parents didn't let me play with certain kids and still had faith for those kids to meet Jesus. But you cannot forfeit your children's safety so that they can be inclusive. Let me move on. 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 There are prayers of faith. Prayers of faith. The purpose is to cast out. Somebody say cast out. Mark 16, 17. It says, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. And they will speak in new, in new languages. The result of praying in faith is that it actually provides freedom in your life. You want some freedom in your life? You can have healing and deliverance service in your bathroom at 2 o'clock in the morning. You want to know how you do it? You put your hand right here on this part of your body. This is your conscience. You put your other hand on the back of your head. This is your heart. Your conscience. Pastor Martin taught an amazing sermon. If, you're, if this is confusing, go back and watch part three. But what you think with your human brain has to agree with your spiritual brain. But it gets lost in translation. So you can literally, in your life, profess freedom. Addiction in my life, you got to go. You can be in the act of firing up whatever it is. You can be in the act of throwing whatever it is back. A drink. I'm not throwing up. I'm talking about tooting it up. I'm not talking about that. Like, you can be in the middle of where, whatever it is and give God authority in that space. But then there's a fourth one that is 99.9999999.0001. That's 100% works all the time and that's praying in, in tongues but we've misrepresented praying in tongues as being something that's spooky it's essential Peter was so bad he says I wish that you would all speak in tongues just like I do then he goes on for 17 chapters on why speaking in tongues is necessary but then he has a caveat he says that if you don't speak in tongues, it doesn't mean that you're not. And this is layman's terms. I'm just giving you the hoodie bonics. Like, whenever, like, I have friends that don't know Jesus, I'm not taking them to the word. I'm breaking it down. And, like, how would 21 Savage say it? Okay. Yeah, 21. That's, like, that's okay. So I got to, oh, Proverbs 21. Thank you, Lord. Like, I got to figure out a way to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Speaking in tongues is the most prolific of prayers. 
Because the purpose of speaking in tongues is that it edifies. Now, that word you hear it a lot in church, but all edify means is to build oneself up. So in those moments where you feel like somebody needs to pray for you, you can build yourself up. When you pray in the spirit and you edify yourself, guess what the result is? It confuses the enemy. When you pray in English, the devil knows what you're saying. Here's the worst part about praying in English. You know what you're saying. So you'll start trying to make sure it sounds pretty. You'll start trying to make sure that you, can, can, I, can I have like five more minutes? Is that okay? Hey, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm right. I honored mom. I told them I was going to honor you. This is the moment. God, I thank you, dad. I love, okay, okay, okay. L- let me show you. Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Maxine, Ron, come here. When you pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit takes what you're saying, disguises what you're saying, and gets it to God. Let's go to the word. The word of God says in Romans 8, 26, it says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. I want you to write this verse down because it's going to help you this week. And I believe that we're going to, anybody else who the Holy, the Holy Spirit in this place? I feel like something crazy is about to happen. Like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't know. Look at your other neighbor and say, you have no idea. Look at the person behind you and say, you're not that spiritual that you know what God wants you to pray, so stop it. I know. No, you don't. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads For us believers, what? In agreement. In harmony, glory to God, with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. I want you to write these four things down. The Holy Spirit helps when you're weak. When you're weak, he moans and groans on your behalf. Third thing is that he interprets those moans and groans. Fourth thing is that he takes those moans and groans to God. This is what it looks like. You are in your life praying. You're praying to God. Maxine says, God, my business is failing. Lord, I need strategy. The Holy Spirit comes over and says, while you pray, hey, Maxine, I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get this straight to Jesus. I got you. Hey, yo, God, what's good, baby? Hey, you went crazy in verse 2, bro. When you made frogs, bro, and then they could fry them up. Frog legs, bro, you crazy. Anyway, see Maxine over there, right? She's praying, right? She's asking for strategy in her business. But if you give her strategy in her business, she won't have any time for her family. So you know what I need you to get her? Clarity on her purpose. Okay. So now Maxine has to make a decision. When she doesn't get the business partner, when she doesn't get the loan, when she can't get the brick and mortar building, is it because she was out of the will of God? Or is God protecting her from something that she can't handle? All of your prayers that don't get answered are not not getting answered because they're not good prayers. Some of them are not getting answered because you ask for strategy, but the Holy Spirit says you don't need strategy. You just need to be re-clarified on what God told you the first time. But she's not good enough. She's, it's not good enough. Somebody, it's not good enough. Some of y'all have been going to conferences since 1998, getting the same word, like, Lord, I think you have something else for me. No, same thing. <laughs> Maxine's praying for change. God, change me. Change my family. Change my situation, God. <laughs> change my heart, God. I got you. Hey, bro, by the way, I know, it's, but you, you dope, bro. You, like, you made me too, and we're the same, but we're different because we have different. Anyway, anyway you crazy. <sighs> Maxine's still praying. <laughs> Evidently, the clarity you gave her wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough for her. Now she wants things to change in her life. Like, you know, you know that group of friends that, like, keep messing over in her life, and, like, she wants them to change? Don't change them. Give her patience. 
some of the friends in your life that won't leave, it's not because they're bad people. God wants to force you to learn how to forgive. All right, all right. Oh, y'all didn't like that one, did ya? <laughs> Oh, my God, these people are so terrible. Why don't they leave out of my life? The reason why they won't leave is maybe because God has to use the hardest lesson to teach you to forgive. Some of your children you can talk to. Uh Uh-uh. And they go, I'm sorry. My parents, all they had to say to me is what? I'm so disappointed. I know, I know you're disappointed. That's it. But some of your kids, you got to, like, drag them by their toes. And then they'll apologize just because they're like, man, Fine. Maxine's still praying. Man, we gave you patience. We gave you clarity. What else could you need? And God is like, why are you still praying? I gave you what you needed. But this time, she starts to pray in the spirit. Go for it. Okay. Oh, I know what that means. So this time, she was looking for an exit strategy, but now she's actually praying for courage in her life. So I need you to give me some courage so I can bring it to her while she's praying. Can I, can, I, can I get back? Okay. Oh, and patience too? Oh, oh, so when she prays in the spirit, she gets all of it? Oh, that's crazy. I'm going to be back with you for the second coming when Jesus come back, but I'm, I'm the, 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 keep, keep doing what you're doing. And now in the middle of speaking in tongues, the stuff that she doesn't even know she needs Oh, yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Now the Holy Spirit says, oh, there's some clarity for you. Oh, you need some courage? Oh, yeah, sis, I got you. And now what he does is as you're praying in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes God and he closes the gap. Because now you've told the Holy Spirit that he's welcome. The Holy Spirit being welcome is not just about him hovering. It's so the Holy Spirit can get God to cover you as you're praying. So this is my question to you. Why wouldn't you want to speak in tongues? I want you to give me, I want you to give me a reason why after today, you think that it's weird. Because there's something that's happening in Miss Maxine even like, as the old folks would say, even now, even now. Thank you. You want to make it in your life? Learn how to speak in tongues. It's not weird. It's not scary. Somebody say it's sacred. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to release you. But I think that there might be some people in the room. You want to literally get the evidence of having the Holy Spirit by being given the gift of speaking in tongues. It shouldn't be weird. Is it weird? Everybody say no. It's not weird. There is some stuff in your life, praying to sweet baby Jesus, you know, the one that you lie and lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep, and if I die before I wake. No, no, like, like, there is some stuff that English, Spanish, and French won't work against. There are some things in your life you gotta receive the Spirit so that you can pray with the Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, whatever you say. Really quick, can our altar ministry please meet us up front? I want to do this strategically. Really quick. Holy Spirit University tonight, 6 o'clock. Make sure that you're here. Baptism, we're not taking any more registrations after 5 o'clock today. Uh, Summer Bash is happening on Saturday. I just want to make sure you get that out of there, right? But is there any person in the room? Actually, everybody stand to your feet. Is there any person persons in the room that you would like to receive not just the power of the Holy Spirit but the evidence of speaking in tongues and don't feel weird, I'd like for you to meet us up front, you gotta, it's, you gotta get comfortable with the uncomfortable I'd like for you to meet us up front anybody, anybody, I don't care how old you are, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter if this is your first time here, I see you sis I see you come on AWC I see you I see you, I see you. My man's came up here with the Bluetooth. He said, I'm gonna put this call on hold. Boop. God bless you. Glory to God. I'm gonna release you. Yeah, I see you, come on. I see you. 
praise God. Lee, you coming too? She said, I'm not doing CG today. I'm going to get, I'm going to get this spirit. You get somebody else to run this camera. Come on. Praise God. Here we go. I'm going to release you, but I believe that there are a couple more people. Because after today, you're going to get a starting package. It's going to jolt your life. And when you open up your mouth from this point on, everything that you've been like moaning and growing about, the Holy Spirit's going to take those tears and put them on paper and give them to God. Let me release you. Everybody lift your hands real quick. Anybody feel the presence of God in the room? I know there are some of you more. We're going to stay here until it's, ne- until it's necessary to move on. Yes, sir. Yeah, no worries. The presence of God is in the room. Real quick, is there anybody else that wants to meet us? Anybody else? Anybody, anybody else? You, you, any of you, you work, you can speak in tongues, but it's, it, you, want, you want to go to a different level. I want to meet you. I don't, I don't want to miss this moment. Don't want to miss this moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yeah, I see you. Hey, souls are being not just saved, they're being changed. This is it. If you know how to speak in the spirit, I need you to stay in this space and open up your mouth. As people begin to come, I'm going to release you, and we're going to do ministry today. Is that all right? Father God, we thank you for every person in the room that's watching online. God, we declare that you would give us faith that what we say, if we bind it on earth, it will be bound in heaven and vice versa. God, we declare and decree that speaking in tongues would not be weird anymore, but God, that we would be comfortable with the uncomfortable and that your spirit would interpret what we're feeling. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen. We love you. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we intercede for those that are in the front of this room right now. We declare and decree in Jesus' name.